Good afternoon, Bruce. And good afternoon to you, Becky. It's lovely to see you today and talk to you about a different part of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. This time we're focusing on a section to do with a passage called Souls Under the Altar. What is the significance of the title, The Souls Under the Altar? Well, we must look at the text and dig down into what we have there. The fifth seal is opened and there under the altar are seen the souls of those who have been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. So this is talking about that part of us, of a human being, which for a time feels as though it's been rejected and totally cast away. So the souls under the altar is speaking about that part of us, that part which is never wiped out, which is held there for a time when we should be ready to use it. You've just mentioned to me that there are situations where it's sometimes difficult to tell the truth. Have you got any examples of those? Well, <clears throat> well I mean, let's think of a, of a work situation where something may be going on which you're uneasy about. And you've got colleagues who, who are wanting to sort of cook the books a bit. Uh, who are saying, well, there's no harm in this. We're not, not, we're not hurting anybody. Um, it, it'll just be you know, good for our own future if, if, we, if we either fiddle the books or if we change the, the story so that it makes uh, things seem in a better light. And it can be extraordinarily difficult for a person to hold their ground. And particularly if you try to hold your ground if you're then ridiculed or made to feel foolish or made to feel not part of the group. And there is a sense of, of, of a battle in which we need to hold on to what we really know in our hearts is good and true. And occasionally we will lapse, hopefully not with serious implications and great damage being done, but afterwards we will think, hold on, I should have said something. I should have resisted. I should have stood my ground. That was the honest, the courageous thing to do. But I've, I've allowed this to go ahead and I'm now part of it. So in a sense, we, we become tainted. So say if I was at work and somebody had dropped some money, I knew it was somebody who was very well off, so it didn't matter. And I picked it up and put it in my pocket now, that person wouldn't even have noticed that the money was missing. Why, why is that a problem? It's not your money. Uh, you know, um, it may sound a simple answer, but in a sense, life is simple. These issues of choices, in one sense, are simple. Yes, of course, they can be very complex in many situations in life because we're just talking about a £20 note or something like that and, and, and we know that that person probably wouldn't miss it, wouldn't affect them greatly and I might be very poor or hard up so we, we would perhaps justify it. But the choice essentially is simple. It is the choice between what is right and what is wrong. And these choices are what help to form our inner being, our spirituality, our character, and who we really want to be. This is what is being built up over decades of making sure that the where we want to be is the direction we're heading in, and it's not being corrupted and weakened and damaged. So while it may not hurt the other person, it's actually us who's been damaged inside. Indeed, and that is a, a rule of life. In a sense, we can't necessarily change other people's attitude or standards or character. In a sense, it's only ourselves that we can deal with. Hopefully, 
our actions will affect other people if that's for good but at the heart of it it is our own direction our own character that that is that is our responsibility